In this presentation, we will take a look at an example problem related to the capital projects funds. We're going to enter transactions into the capital projects fund and do the closing process, closing entries for the capital project fund. We're going to have our information on the right side. This is going to be our trial balance. We will then record journal entries to it. It will be in order, of course, by assets and then liabilities. And then what would be the equity section or the assets minus liabilities section, the fund balance section. And then we have what would be the income statement section for a for-profit organization, the temporary accounts, those that typically would fall out or roll out or close out to what would be the equity section in for-profit, the fund balance section here. We're going to have our information on the left side. First, we have the transfer from the general funds. So we have a transfer from the general fund. Transaction is going to be a debit because we're increasing this being the capital projects fund from another fund, that being the general fund. We're not going to record it as revenue, but it's going to be similar to revenue in that it's going to be an inflow. We're going to credit something for that 670. So we're going to debit the cash. Cash is going up because, of course, we got cash. Cash is going up from zero by 670 to 670. Then we have the other financing sources, other financing sources. We have the interfund transfer in going up in the credit direction. Next transaction, we have a contract signed uh, to construction company. So we have a construction company that we have a contract for capital projects fund. So we have a long-term project. We're going to make a bridge. We're going to make a building. We're going to make a long-term project. We now have the construction company. The contract has then been signed. However, we haven't paid for anything. So at this point in time, the contract signed, haven't paid for anything. That's similar to like a purchase order when we purchase supplies. When we have the purchase order, we ask for inventory. We would like the inventory to be shipped to us, but we haven't paid for it yet. And we haven't gotten the inventory yet. Therefore, nothing's happening. Same thing here. We signed the contract. We would like something to be built, build the building, build the bridge. Haven't yet built the bridge, haven't yet paid for it. No financial transaction generally under an accrual basis. However, under the modified accrual basis, we're going to record this into something similar to an, an expenditure type of account, a holding kind of account. It's going to be the encumbrances account. So the encumbrances account, kind of like an expense, acts kind of like an expense. It's going to go up as an expense does when we, when we increase it. However, it's going to go back down when we can finally record the expense at the point in time that it is able to be recorded under the rules of the modified accrual uh, accounting so we're going to put it on the books debit the encumbrances encumbrances then going up in the debit direction the credit then going to encumbrances outstanding it's going to be in the equity section so we'll put that in uh, the equity section increasing that as well those will always be equal and opposite we're going to reverse that when we go ahead and record the construction expenditure at a later time then we have the vouchered costs of 91,000. Now we're going to say that these costs were not encumbered. So we didn't include them in the encumbrance here. So we haven't already basically assigned them out in the encumbrances. What that means is we don't then have to reverse the encumbrance before we record the expenditure as we normally would if it would have been included in the encumbrance. So in this case, then we're just going to record the construction expenditure, the construction expenditure going up kind of like an expense would the other side then go into a payable because we haven't yet paid for it. That being the voucher payable. So we're going to be increasing or deb debiting the construction expenditure. The other side go into the payable. So we're going to go to the voucher payable, increasing that in the credit direction. Next item, payable from the enterprise funds. We have payable from the enterprise. An enterprise fund is going to be part of the governmental fund accounting. We're in the capital projects fund. The enterprise fund typically providing something more on a similar basis or an accrual basis and having customers similar to what we would see in a for-profit organization. That's why they're going to use the accrual basis. So in essence here, we're going to say we have a transaction with the enterprise fund we're going to record that just basically similar function as we would if we had a transaction with an outside vendor we're going to call that part of our capital construction project so we're going to debit the construction expenditure but instead of crediting like a payable for us to owe someone outside we're going to say due to other funds because this is going to be an enterprise fund intercompany due to another fund not an outside vendor so if we were to record this out we got the construction expenditure that's going to be the debit 
So we're going to increase the construction expenditure in the debit direction. The other side then going to do to other funds. So we're going to say that's going to go up in the credit direction. So there we have that. That puts us back in balance. Then we have the invoice for the progress billing. So we have progress billing for the contract that we put on the books. That's going to be a part of the construction expenditures. However, we have already encumbered it. So we've encumbered this once we have set up the, this item in uh, the encumbrances outstanding and encumbrances. So before we put it into the construction expenditure, we need to reverse the encumbrance. So that's our first item. The encumbrances are on the books. The encumbrance outstanding has a credit. So we debit it to make it go down. The encumbrance has a debit. So we credit it to make it go down. If we post this out, then we're going to reverse this part of the encumbrance. The credit will then be debited, making it go down. Then we have the encumbrance. It has a debit balance. We credit it, making it go down. So there's that item. Then we can record the actual expenditure related to this. And we're going to say that's going to be a debit to the construction expenditure and a credit to contracts payable. So if we record that out, then we're going to say, all right, here's the construction expenditure. We debit that amount. And then the credit's going to go to the contracts payable. So contracts payable is going to be the credit increasing the credit, the increasing the liability. Next item bond issued at par so we have a bond issued at par we issued the bond then in order to finance the capital project so we're not going to have to deal with the, the issue of having the discount or the premium because we issued it at the face amount here and therefore in the capital projects fund we're going to be debiting the cash for that amount of the bond issuance the 5,450 and crediting other financing sources notice what we're not doing we're not putting it on the books for bonds payable as we would do in the in the government wide type of activity. So when we compare this out to government wide type of activity, of course, we would have a payable here, we're recording the other financing sources because we're recording the flow on the modified accrual basis as opposed to the accrual basis. If we then post that out, we're going to say cash is going to be increased. So we increase the cash, the other side going to other financing sources, other financing sources going up in the credit direction. Next item, Paid contractor uh, invoice less the 5%. So we had a 5% retainer that we kept. We're going to pay off the invoice then. So the invoice for the contractor on the books, $1,830,000. We're going to keep 5% of that. So we're going to say here's the one million uh, eight hundred and thirty. It's going to go off the books. And so we're going to take that one eight three zero 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 times 5% times 0 0.05. That's going to be the 91500 so the 91,500 is what we're going to keep. So then we're going to we're going to remove this from the books. We're going to still keep this amount. We're saying, "Hey, we know you've earned the the full amount. We want to keep a retainer until you complete the job so that we so we can keep you around making sure that you complete the the work that hasn't been done up to this point in time." And then here's going to be the cash. So if we record that out then, we're going to say that the contract's payable is going to go down. So it goes down to 0. We record the credit to the retainer. So the retainer then goes up in the credit direction. The difference then going to cash. So we have the difference going to the cash amount. That's what we paid out, of course. Then we have the purchase of uh, temporary investments. So now we're going to say that we're going to take some of this money that's in the cash account. We're going to record that into temporary investments for a short term time period. So remember, we're in a capital projects fund. Our goal here isn't long-term investments, short-term investments as we have cash un until we need it to finance the capital project. So we're going to put money into a debit to the investments just like we would expect. They're going to put it into the investments. Remember, those investments short-term because we're in the capital projects modified accrual. Therefore, we only typically have short-term assets, current type of assets. The other side then going to cash, decreasing cash. Recording that out, we're going to say investments is going to go up with a debit and the other side going to cash cash is going down uh, with a credit and there we have that item next one we're, we're, is that we're now going to close this process out we're going to close out the temporary accounts just like we would in a for-profit organization closing out the temporary accounts to what would be an equity account or a capital account here we're closing out the temporary accounts or the dark blue accounts to the fund balance account. So we're going to close out the temporary accounts. As we do so, however, we need to recognize that we have 
uh, the fund balance, and we have this other uh, encumbrances outstanding item. That's going to be a, a little bit of a muddy situation. We might leave the encumbrances outstanding on the books because it's kind of like more of a clearing account. So it may not close out in the same fashion as would be the case for the other uh, temporary accounts. So if we go through this, we're just going to go through this from top to bottom. There is no revenue, so we don't have to do anything from there. We have the other financing sources. That's a credit balance. We need to make it go to zero. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it. We're going to debit it, making it go to zero. Then we have the other financing sources, and it's got a credit balance. We need to make it go down to zero. So we're going to debit it, making it go down. Encumbrances, we're going to leave those on the books. Not going to do anything to the encumbrances. Those will be left there. Then we have the construction uh, expenditures. It has a debit balance, so we're going to credit the construction expenditures to make it go down. And then the difference, debits minus the credits, what we need to be in balance is going to go to the fund balance restricted. If we post this, then we're going to say that here's the 100, here's the 670, making it go to zero. Here's the uh, 5450, making it go to zero. Here's the 19485, making it go to zero. And then the difference going to the fund balance restricted. So there we have, there's our post-closing trial balance. We have this one hanging out here. And we also have the encumbrance equal and opposite basically hanging out because those may not close. They're not going to be included in the financial statements, but they're going to be hanging out and then reversed at the point in time that we uh, actually record the expenditure related to them.